A reading from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 1, verses 1 to 8. Glory to you, O Lord. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in the prophet Isaiah, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way, the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Come, Lord Jesus. Come into our hearts Come into our world with your justice, change our hearts with your love, change our world. Amen. So there is no denying that John the Baptist is a bit of an odd duck. His diet seems odd. His clothing seems odd, and calling the barren wilderness home seems odd. And yet, there is nothing odd about John's message. It's not even an especially new message. Read through any of the Old Testament prophets, and the message is pretty consistent. Shape up! Get your priorities in order. No more selfish, self-centered living. Repent. John preaches what God's people throughout the generations have needed to hear over and over and over. John preaches what we need to hear. Many of the choices that we make in our lives are not life-giving. And though some of the choices that we make in our lives may be life-giving for me or life-giving for some, those choices may not be life-giving for all. And so John preaches the hope that can come through change. And change that starts with me. Change that starts with each one of us. Change that ripples out to bring benefit to others. In typical Mark fashion, we have very few details of what John actually preached. What else did John say besides repent and prepare? What tone of voice did he use? We don't know. But we do know who came out to listen. And I find that very, very interesting. Mark tells us that people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to John. Now, even if that's a bit of an exaggeration, that is still a whole lot of different people. Country folk and city folk, peasants and hoity-toity leaders, simple and sophisticated, poor and rich, the whole economic spectrum. Mix in the diversity of different races and different ethnic groups and different generations and different genders. 
And there's something about John and John's message that intrigues and interests most everybody. That says something significant about their lives, about the system in which they were living, about their level of satisfaction and contentment with life in general. John's message was all about change and reordering priorities. And judging by the crowds, I would say that a whole lot of people were open to change, maybe even yearning for change. Some might even be desperate for change. And John is not preaching easy change. John is preaching the kind of hard work change that comes when one takes responsibility instead of blaming others. The kind of hard work change that comes when one owns up to an addiction and joins a support group kind of hard work change that comes when one recognizes that racism is all around us and there is no quick and easy fix. John invites us to reorient our lives. John invites us to open our hearts that we might be filled with love to share. John invites us to get ready for the beginning of the biggest change of all. Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming to change everything. And ready or not, here he comes. In that very first sentence, the gospel writer Mark alerts us to a big shift gigantic shift. In the Roman world, where power prevailed and where might made right and where a great chasm existed between the haves and the have-nots, in the world of the Roman Empire, only one was called the Son of God, and that was Caesar. That was the emperor. And yet, how does Mark describe Jesus Christ? He is the son of God. And what we will see throughout this gospel story is that in every way possible, is Jesus different from Caesar? So very Clearly, is God's agenda different from the empire's agenda? John the Baptist is preaching God's agenda. Jesus will come preaching God's agenda. And what is at the heart of God's agenda? Love. God loves us, and God calls us to love one another. Our love for one another reveals our love for God, and our love for God shines forth in our love for one another. We may choose to live our lives by other rules that have little to do with love, But John invites us to recognize that God's rule of love is the only one that lasts and truly matters and gives meaning and purpose to our lives. John extends an invitation that we can embrace or ignore. But ready or not, here he comes. You recognize these words from games of your childhood? Ready or not, here I come. 
when our children were young. They, like so many children, loved to play hide-and-seek. With the kids hiding and one of us parents seeking. Yes, they enjoyed hiding, but even more. They delighted in being found and shrieked with glee as one of us would scoop them up in the embrace of our arms. Such can be our joy when Christ comes to us to scoop us up in the embrace of love and send us forth to live in that love. And all God's people say, Amen. Hey, thanks for watching this video. Be sure to give us a like and even a comment. And please, please, please don't forget to subscribe to our channel.